So glad to see so many of you here today. I am Alonzo Weaver, I'm Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, and I'm also serving as a Chief uh, Utility Officer for Memphis Life, Gas, and Water. Uh, I've been with MLGW for about 39 years and uh, been the kind of pilot managing this process of trying to determine uh, what's the best uh, power supply solution for uh, Memphis and Shelby County. Um, I want to thank uh, Pastor Norman for uh, opening the doors here and allowing us to come in and, and uh, use his space and for this very important process. I want to get an opportunity to hear from you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit, but it really it's about hearing from you. Uh, I want to thank our, our board commissioner, Leon Nixon, he's here. Uh, the rest of the board of commissioners will get your comments. This is going to be reported and be shared with them. Uh, so fear not, even though they're not here, they will get your comments and they will, will hear from you. Uh, this meeting was designed to take care of the issue around, you know, if all your meetings are in the board, this board of commissioners meeting are at 8.30 in the morning. And it's hard to get downtown. And it's hard to park. So we wanted to schedule a couple of meetings that were in the evenings where people could get, get to it easily and they could easily park and then make their comments. So, so here we are. Uh, <laughs> corporate communications does a lot of work. Uh, I keep them pretty busy and they've done a good job. And uh, Chairman Nolan is here and Lydia Johnson is in the back. I'm not sure who else, who else is back there. I can't really see, but uh, thank you so much for setting up everything and, and, and being here for, uh, for us and preparing the, the event for us. Uh, without any further ado, let's uh, talk about power supply. I wanted to level set because was, you know, there, there are some people who have not seen this presentation. We may not have heard it, but I just want to level set and cover this. It'll be redundant for, for many of you, but uh, hopefully it won't be too redundant. So let's talk about our recommendation. Many of you know that uh, MLGW embarked upon the IRP process. A lot of it was done right here in this room back in uh, a few years ago now. And uh, out of that IRP process, we came to the conclusion that we need to do some RFPs based on the safeties that we saw. And we put the RFPs out, and this is the output of those RFPs. So I'm going to give you a brief RFP out recap, request for the poll out recap the updated analysis. Now, if you watched in June, we gave you one set of figures. But those figures were based on December bid. So after June, the shortlist was allowed to refresh their prices. And everybody on the shortlist refreshed their prices, and that's what we have here in this outlook. We're going to talk about the RFP conclusions, the recommendation, and we're just going to lay out a few ground rules for uh, this, for this for listening session so that everybody knows who's the reflect on it. So, updated analysis. Uh, power costs versus TBA long-term partnership. TBA submitted the long-term partnership, uh, and we had gotten bids on Portfolio 6 and 9 and RFP. Portfolio 6 and 9 included uh, local generation, which was a five cycle generation, along with solar, local solar, a fair amount of local solar, and then the RFP full requirements. So we put out basically three RFPs RFP for the thermal, an RFP for the renewables, and an RFP for transmission. Uh, the renewables also had uh, any other uh, embedded in it. So we could get uh, responses that were a full requirement type of response. So that included uh, TBA and other entities that could give us a full requirements response. So we looked at the various portfolios, and if you remember what we presented in, in June, portfolio six and nine actually showed a slightly lower cost than the long-term partnership. But after we got them to refresh their prices, everybody refreshed their prices, TVA refreshed their prices, everybody refreshed their prices. The solar prices then went up, went much higher 
It turns out the portfolio six and nine and the full requirements contract were all higher than the TVA long-term partnership as far as cost is concerned. So there's no savings in moving from TVA and moving to the uh, portfolio six and nine. So, what are the key benefits of a long-term partnership? Key benefits of this long-term partnership is that it's a 3.1% decrease in the base rate and 5% of the 5% of the energy that is energy needs can be renewable. And even more than that, if you consider uh, the green, the, uh, green, green effects, green effects, that's what I said, green power switch, green effects. A green invest program where you can add more solar to your system. Uh, it's, a, it's a great tool for recruiting. A lot of companies have renewable goals, so it provides that opportunity. Uh, it is, however, a 20 year contract. It's a 20 year rolling contract. You see, that's, that's, that means it's kind of evergreen. When you're in an evergreen contract now, it's a five year rolling contract. We previously, we've probably been in a 10 year rolling contract. But nevertheless, it's an evergreen contract. Uh, why is that? TVA can probably explain better than I can, but if you look at what we had on Portfolio 6 and 9, Portfolio 6 and 9 were solar projects, combined cycle projects. They were looking at 15, 20, 25, 30 years of commitment. What happens at the end of that commitment? You don't trash the solar and you don't trash the, ger the generation, you probably renew that. So it is, th the nature of Forever Green is there, just not explicit. So it's an evergreen contract for 20 years. It has a termination notice of 20 years. So if you look at the savings of the TBA long term partnership, it, it, it starts immediately. It's a little different than with six and nine. Uh, Portfolio 6 and 9, you had to invest in transmission, you had to invest in, in sizable amount of money in transmission, you had to invest in the solar and, and all of that. So it's a, it's a sizable investment, which didn't, you didn't get payoff for until probably realistically seven years or so, because the transmission of all was a large, large project. But you are able to get benefits of the long-term partnership from signing. So if we were to sign the long-term partnership, we would go immediately be able to get the benefits of the savings, and they would start in 2023 uh, and accumulate up to approximately 152 million just from 2023 to 2027. If you look at the savings going all the way out to 2047, it becomes a very big number. It's about 944 million nominally and 603 in the pressure value of the 25 year period. So about $32 per customer uh, over that time period. So $32 a, a year per customer. So that's, that's the savings we're talking about. That's the, the process we're talking about. That's the uh, recommendation that we have. So the conclusion is that in the time that we've been doing this, there have been numerous changes to the power industry. There's been inflationary pressures, there's been supply chain pressures, and all sorts of things that have happened. Uh, but it's moved the solar to be more expensive. That's what really drove the changes in, in the pricing. We use real world current cost. We get costs from RFPs. These are not assumptions. These are people who are in the business that do it on a regular basis and they provide these, these uh, quotes to us. Uh, the, the LTP proposal, long-term long partnership, is the most cost-effective power supply arrangement and that's the one we are recommending. So basically the recommendations are to uh, reject the uh, transmission proposal, uh, to reject the thermal, and accept the long-term partnership as the uh, proposal for uh, us to go implement going forward. So, We've had a common time period. We've got this common period here. It's been, it started, we made this presentation originally in September, and we said it was going to be at least 30 days. So it's, here we are at the end of October, and it's been more than 30 days. Right. So we've got a lot more 
uh, input, and if we, we wanted to have an opportunity for the public to have input. And you can view the proposals by going to the website, www.com, power supply info. It's a fair amount of information. It's a lot of stuff there, but it is, it's, it's good reading. Um, and you can make comments at powersupply at mlgw.com.org. Uh, if you have more comments than you want, are able to make here in these three minutes that you'll get today, um, we're going to ask the board to approve our recommendation later this year. Um, we'll be coming up here probably uh, in November. That's so well. The board approved the subsequent request we made to City Council, and approval will follow uh, based on their, their vote. So tonight, ground rules, three minutes. How long? Three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Three minutes. <laughs> this is not the time for presentations, uh, uh, but we do want your comments. So it's got to be fair to everybody, give everybody an opportunity. So three minutes. You need to complete a comment card. And they've had an the opportunity to get the comment cards and turn them in. Um, and the board and staff, we're not going to hear, we're not here to answer questions, we're just here to hear your comments. So we're going to sit down and shut up and listen. Okay? So, at this time, turn it back over to Tamara, who will call on the commenters. Thank you, Alonzo. Good evening, and everyone. If you have a comment card, you can bring that to me. <coughs> If you would like to make a comment and you don't have a comment card, you can see Leela out, out, right outside uh, this door. So I will read uh, your names in order of uh, the cards that I receive. I will set my timer for three minutes and uh, we'll just go in that order. So first up, and the, the microphones are right up here at the front, is uh, Pearl Walker. from the beautiful hamlet of Whitehaven. My name is Pearl Eva Walker. I am the coordinator for Memphis Has the Power. Memphis Has the Power is a campaign to ensure that Memphians have clean, affordable, and renewable energy options. We are backstopped by SACE, that's the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, Knoxville, Tennessee. Additionally, can you step to this, this microphone? Is this one working? It may not be on. Okay. So. Reset the time. Thank you. You got it. Good job. Good evening. I bring you greetings from the beautiful hamlet of White Haven. My name is Pearl Eva Walker. I am the coordinator for Memphis Has the Power. Memphis Has the Power is a campaign to ensure that Memphians have clean, affordable, and renewable energy options. We are backstopped by SAFE, that's the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, Knoxville, Tennessee. Additionally, I am the ECJ Chair for the Memphis Chapter NAACP. The MLGW staff has recommended to its Board of Directors that MLGW sign a forever contract with TVA. This recommendation is short-sighted and doesn't take into consideration the opportunity still available for MLGW to negotiate more affordable clean energy, reduce pollution in our communities, and improve the quality of life of hundreds of thousands of people. Community members do not want to be tied to the TVA indefinitely and want ML in and want MLGW to leave all options on the table right now. This will allow for more Memphians and Shelby County residents to speak on this issue and for adequate due diligence to be given in consideration of the best possible future for our community. MLGW should keep its options open instead of automatically signing up to be TBA's customer forever and forever is a long time. 
TVA's never-ending contracts renew every year and require 20 years' notice to terminate, making it practically impossible for power distributors like MLGW to leave. With a guaranteed customer base, TVA can ignore ratepayers and their calls for cheaper renewable energy options. If MLGW and city leaders decide that staying with TVA is the best option for Memphis, they should continue to use the current five-year deal instead of signing TVA's perpetual contracts. The decision MLGW makes on our power supplier will have a direct impact on your utility bill. The 30 to 40 percent increase in our bills this past summer was largely a result of TVA passing their increased cost from reliance on fossil fuels to customers, yet they're still planning to increase gas usage, which will continue to affect our utility bills. TVA will continue to limit our ability to invest in local solar projects and energy efficiency programs, instead using the money from our electricity bills to fund big fossil plants and pipelines. Say no to the 20-year contract. Say no to the 20-year contract. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Patrick Houston. Hey, my name is Patrick Houston. Um, I live at 200 Wagner Place, Memphis, Tennessee, 38103. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, and thank you for the time that you put into this process. Um, I know you all invested a lot of your own personal time into this. Um, I'm a public servant here in Shelby County, and my job involves caring for and protecting the same people you call constituents. Um, I'd like to share my opinion on the matter of the TVA contract. And just because TVA is a power company does not mean that they need all the power. This deal means that TVA would no longer need to come to the table to negotiate with MLGW and the community we call Memphis. By choosing to keep our current contract, we retain some of the MLGW's ability to hold TVA accountable in their power generation and distribution. I respectfully ask that you not put all of our eggs in one basket, that basket being the long-term partnership. And the figures that are provided in this presentation are still projections into the future. They're not solid, set in stone. And uh, the Memphis community will be the people footing this bill, and I, take, I hope you take to heart um, what they have provided for you all. Thank you. I, I do want to remind everyone, please state your name and your address uh, for the record. <clears throat> Next up is Paul Klein. My name is Paul Klein. I live at 1841 Black Bear Circle East. Cordova 38016, but I'm in this neighborhood all the time because I have family in Big Hampton. For about 80 years now, you, MLGW, have purchased electricity from the TVA. In 2019, you folks at MLGW decided to start researching the possibilities of a better deal. Better for your ratepayers and better for our environment. And I applaud you for that. Today, right when all the possibilities are just coming to light, the TVA is asking you to lock Memphis into a never ending 20 year rolling forever contract. It's becoming clear every day now that climate change is real and that fossil fuels are primarily responsible for climate change. Yet currently, only 3% of TVA's electricity production is coming from wind and solar. 
And yet and still, they have doubled down on building more fossil gas-fired power plants and already begun the largest build-out of dirty gas power plants in the whole country. Meanwhile, our federal government is putting their emphasis on developing clean and renewable energy infrastructure. The recent Inflation Reduction Act is the largest federal investment for climate in United States history, with a record $369 billion set aside for developing clean energy and fighting climate change. Change is coming to your industry, and you folks are being asked to chain your wagon to an out-of-date dinosaur of a company, and a company that has brazenly demonstrated that they don't really care about Mendians by starting to truck their toxic coal ash through our community and store it above our drinking water without so much as consulting with our community or even our city council. It's obvious even to a lay person with no degrees behind their name like me, that with $369 billion being dedicated to developing clean and renewable energy, new technologies, new providers, and lower prices are coming. Would you rather be able to possibly take advantage of them in five years or have to wait for at least 20? Those numbers you presented were based on information before that money is hitting the bank and 369 billion is gonna make some change in your industry. It's obvious even to a lay person who doesn't have a degree that this is going to make a difference. Signing up for anything longer than five years will be throwing away your bargaining power as TDA's most valuable customer. Memphis will have no leverage to seek lower prices and residential energy efficiency programs that could help ease the burden on our residents who bear some of the highest energy costs in America today. Now is the moment, now is the time. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis Lynch. Uh, good evening. I am Dennis Lynch, 347 North McLean in Midtown Memphis, a stone's throw from Orton Park. Uh, thank you very much for having this meeting, this opportunity tonight. But I want to point out that there aren't many re members of the public here. Unfortunately, there was no notice in the Daily Memphian about this event. There was no notice in the Commercial Appeal events section about this event. We do know that there will be coverage of this event in the news, but to get people here to be able to give their comments, there should have been more effort and there should have been more people here. Uh, secondly, you've heard about the 20-year contract, and you know we object to that, and it's not a 20-year contract, it's a forever contract. Um, also, there's some controversy, but the, there's a penalty clause which is very significant I have to research that. I was told that what I said Tuesday night was wrong, but I still believe that there is a huge penalty if MLGW decides at some later date to cancel and, and get out of the contract 20 years in the future or whatever date that is. Uh, also, no matter what, no business would make a major business decision during this current economic situation. They would cover things that have to cover their operational issues and make sure their operation can keep running, but they wouldn't make a major change in their operating and financial plans. A 20-year contract is a big change from a five-year contract, especially with all the provisions, and especially with all that we know about the changes that are occurring in the U.S. economy, in the energy economy, in all the various aspects. Now is not the time to make a significant change. No business would do that in their right minds. Uh, other things I want to say is that there, there's not a good effort to expand the energy efficiency programs. That needs to be part of uh, MLGW's plans. There is a currently energy efficiency programs, but it needs to be increased by tenfold. Uh, clean renewable energy, obviously we've already talked about that. Climate change, I was on the power supply advisory team during the first phase of the on this power supply project, and I gave input. I encouraged MLGW and their consultant to have a study on the importance of climate and to actually have a portfolio which was based on addressing
climate issues, climate crisis issues, and the consultant said, oh, we don't need to do that because uh, renewables are already low enough cost and they will be automatically selected by the model. So we don't need a climate crisis scenario in our analysis. So there were many places where MLGW's consultants avoided answering important questions. Um, of course, we want to protect the aquifer, and we're not sure whether these programs are addressing the aquifer properly. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, you know, gas prices are going up. I don't think the analysis reflects that. Thank you very much. Ray Bauer. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, Ray Bauer, um, 755 University Street, here in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm here representing um, the group 21st Century Memphis or Bust. It's a group of concerned citizens, over 100, growing every day, advocating for transparency, accountability, and reliability of our publicly owned MLTW. And um, I noticed on Tuesday uh, somebody handed out flyers, so I printed some flyers. Is it all right if I give you a flyer? understand that MLGW is interested in promoting transparency with its customers. So our group is requesting that the page where MLGW has posted bidding information, the power supply that you put up earlier, also be updated with um, three things. Uh, the first, the analysis that consultant group Siemens or GDS performed showing the cost to Memphis for transmission infrastructure to connect to other generation grids. I believe this is also referred to as a transmission cost gap analysis. That would help when we look at the bids, understand a little bit better what the pricing is going to be that's going to reflect back on the customers. Um, the second thing, the, on that same power supply page, TBA's bid information is concise and easy to understand. So we know there are 24 other bids. Um, right now, the other bids consist of well, between 100, some are 500 pages of data. Um, the consultants summarized TBA's bidding information, which means they also probably did this for the other 24 bidders in order to compare apples to apples. So could you please make these summarized versions public as well so that when the public is looking at them, they don't have to sift through all that data. Um, 13 bids made the short list. But when you look at the bids right now, you can't tell which of those 13 made that short list. So if you could please delineate which of those bids were on the short list, that would be really helpful. And then the last thing had to do with, um, actually the screen that you showed earlier, where you have TBA um, and then Portfolio 6 and Portfolio 7. And it was helpful when you mentioned that, you know, one was thermal and um, I believe the other was the solar, but we would like to ask that all the bids be actually named so we can see in your graph, not just TVA versus A, portfolio A, portfolio B, but actually who were the companies. That's the part that we're having trouble when we're trying to decipher it. So that's it. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Price. Church, and I don't know why she did. 
or anything like that. Uh, but it just pretty much kept me indoors when I was over in the area. Um, and, you know, growing up, I kind of realized there was a reason. Maybe she didn't know it, but, you know, I grew to learn about it. Um, as I grew, friends, family, uh, people I grew up with got different diseases, uh, became mentally ill and handicapped in some way or other, and just died off slowly or in pain or incarcerated due to some type of poisoning. Uh, you know. And then I had to ask God why. And that question brought me here today, and it brought me uh, into the field of research that, you know, that my activism is surrendered center around. And um, some of those reasons are because TVA, and I just noticed that MGMW has allowed chemicals, uh, has allowed lead in our water, our pipe systems, and you know, allowed uh, 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 fuel, or uh, you know, chemical fuels to be leaked in that neighborhood, leaked in that area, coal tar ash leaked in that area, and I slowly watched my family and friends die. And I had to ask why. Um, why? Y'all already knew about it in 2016 with the chemical fuel. Y'all already knew about it back in 2012 with the poison in our lead water that's affecting Pacific zip codes of uh, differently racially diverse communities. And now y'all want to keep us locked in a 20 year contract when y'all don't even take care of what y'all got right now. Um, to be locked in a 20 year contract would exempt the uh, TVA and MGMW of being held accountable. Please look at us, don't be on your phone, that's rude. Uh, to actually look at us and have some form of accountability for these actions. Um, you know, when you know that the company that's supposed to be uh, responsible for your uh, life, your utilities, and things to keep people alive, human rights, are allowing things to happen. It reminds you of uh, incidents such as Tuskegee when they experimented on black men and women by injecting with syphilis, or Cornelius Rose when he purposely poisoned members of the Puerto Rican uh, Isles. And what that was then, y'all doing to a greater extent to the city of Memphis now. That's what's going on. So I'm, I'm tired of being sick and tired, I'm tired of people. Like I say I need more time because I have a bit of disability and I would like to like finish my home. But vote no. Three minutes. Okay, vote no on this 20 year contract. I don't care what CEO or whatever y'all company that y'all part of, we don't want it here. I pray for you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Name and your address, please. Hey, Sheriff Bonner. <laughs> Pamela Moses is no longer uh, 6201 Haley Road, um, 2369 Jackson Avenue. I'm here because there are a lot of things wrong in this city, and it deals with people in power, remaining in power, and keeping all the resources and the money that goes along with it. We do not need to enter into any new contracts that we've had for the past umpteenth years because we just don't. We are going to catch up with the rest of the world and we're going to provide sustainable energy in this city. Um, in Texas, they have people that are using wind energy, solar, and we have to start thinking like that. And TVA is good for the past. And if they want to continue to do business with the citizens in Tennessee and the other six states that you control, you need to start thinking of some more innovative approaches to make us more encouraged to sign lifelong contracts, but we do not want it. I'm here on behalf of Black Lives Matter in Memphis as well as Rise Up America and the Hollywood Neighborhood Community Association. And we are against the city entering into a contract longer than necessary. 
We need to catch up and TVA needs to put people before profit. I knew people that worked for TVA for many years. They made lots of money and, and TVA has made enough money off of, you know, the people. So it's time to give us something back. Give us something to want to sign a contract that long. Are you going to put solar powered um, panels on everybody's house that's at the poverty level so they can not have to pay a bill? Like, what are you going to give the people for this contract that makes it make sense to the people that have to pay it? And if you're not willing to compromise, I'm going to ask that the city and anybody else vote no on this. Thank you. Reverend Gordon Myers. Um, Gordon Myers, 11167 Orville Cove, Arlington, Tennessee, 38002. Um, I'd like to say what everyone else has said uh, and emphasize and, and amplify that. Um, it's obvious and undeniable that fossil fuels kill. Not only do they kill, but they target different neighborhoods differently, disproportionately. So the poorest among us bear the highest level of cost, both in terms of, of medical issues and health issues, but also in increased need for energy. There's truckloads currently traveling the, seat, the streets of our communities with hazardous coal ash that bear evidence to that fact every single day. To continue to invest all of our portfolio in fossil fuel energy projection is, and do the same thing we've always done, is obviously insane. To continue to allow the poorest among us to bear a disproportionate cost and, and weight and, and death from our desire to have cheap energy is a violation of my faith's command to love one another. It's immoral. It's not right. It's not what we as a community should be doing to each other. There has to be a better way. What kind of card do you want to get? Profits should not trump. Park Road, and I'm just, I don't represent anybody but myself, I'm just an ordinary citizen, but I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, back in February, uh, Dr. Larry Moore from University of Memphis wrote a great article about remembering MLG and W history is critical to preserving it, and so may I give you a copy of it? others for the comments they made tonight and the reference to Texas is really what I was going to speak to so thank you for whoever started that one. Um, <clears throat> you'll remember in our storm this winter um, I live in an area where my power goes out all the time and I appreciate MLG and W because they work really hard to get it back on but I noticed that when we were out of power for about a week Texas was out for weeks. And so I am hesitant of these new companies that do not have the dependability 
that TDA has had. <laughs> and my request would be that we not align ourselves with these new power companies, which may have great ideas that aren't ready to take on the size of a city like Memphis yet. I have friends in Texas that were without power for three weeks because the power wasn't there. My problem was trees down on lines, but, but MLG and W had the power. And so dependability does count, and it counts for all the citizens, and the citizens in the, the, um, the, every part of our community need dependable uh, resource, dependable power, especially in the, in the cold of winter. And so I just, I ask for that, and I, uh, also, as Dr. Moore said in his article, when you go to private companies, private companies have stockholders, stockholders want to make money. So don't think that the money making is going to be put to an end because private companies will make money and they'll make it on the backs of Memphians. And that's just my only request. Thank you for the time that you gave me today. Thank you. Alden Smith? Alden. Alden. Um, sorry. All good. I get Aiden more than anything else. <laughs> Aiden Smith. I wasn't expecting to talk today, but as probably the only Gen Z here, maybe. <laughs> Gen Z! Woo! Yeah. As the youngest person here, I probably have. Uh, the longest future to look into, and it's a scary fact to know that Memphis probably isn't going to be my future if I am at a higher risk of, say, four times the average in the country for higher cancer rates, like people have in South Memphis around the sanitation building, sanitation, I mean services, sorry. Um, my name is Alden Schmidt, as everybody knows. I'm from 986 Fly Street, Cooper Young, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. I am a communication fellow with Protect Our Aquifer. You call this contract evergreen. The evergreen contract, in other words, is never ending. We're not talking about a tree. We're talking about the future of Memphis. We're talking about seven generations down the line. We're talking about your children's grandchildren's grandchildren. What future are they gonna have if we don't have clean water? We already have breaches in our aquifer where ETOs and, and other contamination is entering our drinking water that has taken two to 3,000 years to filter. We're not gonna have that if we keep polluting not only the water, but also our air. We have a definite problem, and I want to be able to have a future in Memphis where I don't have to stay with TVA's never-ending contract. I want a future where I can choose if we want to switch to a more efficient one. I want a future where maybe Memphis can catch up with the rest of the country, and I can actually see us have a future, because right now it really doesn't look like it. And that's scary. I am Memphis born and raised, I had the privilege of being in Midtown the whole time. I had the privilege of having cleaner air, and cleaner water, and privileges of getting MLGW to come to my house quicker. I had the privilege of having a house that would keep me warm. Not everybody has that. And TVA is not gonna keep it like that for us. They're a monopoly. They don't care about us, they care about profit. I care about us. MLGW cares about us, I've seen it. And they should still care about us, because we matter. People matter. People over profit. Thank you for your time. Woo! Scott Van Barry. Oh, ma'am. You caught me with nutter butter in my mouth. You can finish chilling. Yeah, please. <laughs> All right, so I'm Scott Danbury. I live at 1051 Stonewall in, in North Memphis. Um, I'm also the State Conservation Program Coordinator for the Tennessee Chapter of the Sierra Club. 
And the only thing I want to say tonight is don't sign a 20 year contract. There's too much stuff shifting and moving right now. And one of the things that did not get considered at all in any of these deliberations is the new benefits and opportunities that have arisen with the Inflation Reduction Act. And Memphis should be taking full advantage of that right now because the Inflation Reduction Act says, hey, we've got all kinds of money and tax credits, benefits, direct payments available to low-income people to improve the energy efficiency of their homes. Yeah. And, and it says anywhere you install renewable energy that is on top of economically impoverished areas, and most of Memphis is an economic uh, you know, empowerment zone, you're going to get increased tax credits and benefits and direct pays. And right now, MLGW shouldn't be looking at what is our contract with TVA, what is our contract with anybody else we bid with. MLGW should be looking at what kind of investments it can take, taking advantage of the investment uh, for the Inflation Reduction Act. It's a misnamed act. Inflation <laughs> Reduction Act. We should be looking at all of the ground fields around Memphis. We should be looking at all the rooftops of the warehouses that ask us for payment in lieu of taxes breaks. And we should be putting solar renewable energy on those properties. And we should be saving the ratepayers of Memphis money, both in the in the rates that they pay for the power they purchase, but also in avoiding payments. Avoiding payments by making their homes be more energy efficient, by making opportunities available to them to work in their own communities, helping their neighbors to make their homes more energy efficient. We could have a huge industry here in Memphis that not only benefits the ratepayers, but benefits people that are working in the clean energy industry. That's what MLGW should be looking at right now, not signing a long-term contract with TVA or any other power provider. We should be looking at how the public power model can work right here. We own our power company. We should be putting our power company to work for the people that own it. Thank you. Tell it. Deanna Ming. Awesome. I hope I got your last name. I had to write it twice, though. I don't disagree with anything anybody said about some incredible things said on both sides. And you know what? We really got to work together on this. This is a major, major decision. It's a major problem. I am, you know, very concerned about the environment, about our aquifer, about, uh, you know, better using safer types of heating and uh, all that, very much so. But I'm also very concerned about the raise in our bills this past year. And I, I know it's, it has to be really hard for the, you know y'all to make a decision on what to do to not raise the bills anymore. And I can see that with, with the way it was laid out. My question was, you know, what happens if we have to get out of the contract? But uh, you know, I, I really think it'll be a major problem for for a lot of Memphians, including myself. Oh, I forgot to say, I live at 983 South Cox, Cooper Young, uh, Deanna Mead. But uh, yeah, we, we got a major problem in Memphis. If TVA just raised our, you know, my bills were double, and I don't think most people can, can handle that in Memphis. So we've got to do something, and we need MLGW to help with that as much as all the other really equally important decisions that y'all are making. So, the, you know, the, like I said, the question I, I, I didn't understand, I might be able to find it if I look further into, uh, you know, the websites provided. But, you know, what does happen if we're, for some reason, wanting to get out of the 20-year contract? And what is the penalties and all that? So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Kimberly L. Davis.
Hello, Kimberly L. Davis, 1753 Berlin Road, 38116. And I am here on behalf of all the ratepayers who have lost hope, um, and also those who are so busy working to make ends meet that they couldn't attend today's meeting. Um, I'm very thankful to have this opportunity to speak with you all. I'm also very grateful that we are considering um, the ramifications of our choices to enter into this long-term commitment with TVA. I implore you to use the leverage that you have and to please consider us, um, the concerned citizens of Memphis who are faithful ratepayers, who want to see our city grow. Um, I'm here today because against all hope I believe, and hope I believe that things can change for the better for our city, I believe that we can actually employ renewable energy sources. I believe that we can change for the better. I am begging you not to enter a long-term commitment with TVA because they have shown that they do not care about our local environment. And I want a better future for Memphis, like the young lady shared earlier. I believe that we can have that better future. I believe, though, that this is a very crucial moment for us, because if we do not seek a better deal, and if we do not make better choices, we will be putting our city in a very dangerous position. And that's not what I want for this city. I love this city. I believe you all do, too. Um, you have chosen to serve the city in the way that you serve it. And as a citizen, I'm here today because I believe that if we make a better choice, that we can make our city better in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think this is Tim Burchett. If you would state your name and your address, please, for the record. Well, I was looking for the microphone, but I probably don't need it. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening. I am Tim Burchett, also known as Hydro. Uh, for the record, I stay at 625 Brister, Memphis, Tennessee, 38111. And I am here in part um, because in the previous episode that Ms. Pearl Walker had invited me to, um, y'all had a recommendation from GDS to have a long-term partnership unless there is nuclear or a hydrogen economy. I'm not particularly fond of nuclear, and I think that there are some environmentalists that aren't either. But I am pretty well-versed with hydrogen in my research. As much as we would love to be more like California and have solar energy, we need um, a more cost-effective means of storing that energy. Hydrogen is the best way to do it because it stores 236 times more energy per unit mass than lithium-ion batteries that degrade over time or in both climates. With that, in conjunction with solar, and hydroelectricity, there are renewable options for us to explore other than TVA's big three, which are coal, natural gas, and nuclear. Thank you. Thank you. Ward Archer. <laughs> Thank you for letting me speak again. I know I, I, I had a chance uh, Tuesday night at Germantown, but I just wanted to say this. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure you've all been following the invasion of the Ukraine, right? And every day there's atrocities going on and everybody's backed up against the wall. And, and one, one concept that keeps coming up is, you know, is there an off-ramp? You know, how, how do we, how does Putin get out of this thing or, or, or how does Ukraine get out of this thing? Is there an off-ramp? 
And my intuition is, and I've been around for a minute, uh, this is not gonna, this is not gonna end well. Uh, there's just not enough information out there and this contract is just, uh, the more we look at it, the more it just seems like who would sign this thing. So I think, I beg you to consider that there is an off-ramp here, which is to not leave TVA, but to stay in the current situation until we can figure out some more ideas, uh, which are, are coming at rapid fire. Um, I mean, this summer was, has been a game changer. We just, the Mississippi River's at an all-time low in the history of measurement. I mean, uh, so I, I plead with you to um, take the offering, stay with TBA, but stay with them for five years. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Those are all the comment cards that we have um, for this evening. And so we want to go Thank you again for coming and giving us your comments. I appreciate that very much. You took time out of your day to come here and, and speak to us. And I know that that means a lot to you and it means a lot to us. Uh, we will take those comments and as I said, they will share it with the rest of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, we'll process all that information, of course. Uh, as you keep posted on what's going on with MLGWs, pay attention to the website. I encourage you to uh, look at the website and, and look at the various bids that came in. And if you had additional comments, you can certainly make them online. So thank you very much. I want to thank again Pastor Norman for opening up his church. I want to thank the Korean Corporate Communications, Brandon, and Mr. Lila, and all who are working with uh, MLGW in getting these, this done. So thank you so very much, and I wish you a good, great day. I, I think Dennis has a question. Will you publish all of the public comments on the MLGW website? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> That we will do a summary. We we have this recorded. We recorded all of the, the comments that uh, have been made tonight. It, was, it will probably be more of a written summary. Is that good, Sarah? I would like to have at least a tally of, of the totals as far as how many comments and their their sentiments. That would be very helpful. We'll take that into consideration. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Quick question, you may have said it, but how long will public comments be uh, accepted online? How long is that going to be available? Until the vote. Until the vote, sometime in November. Yes. Okay. What's the date in November? Not sure of that yet. I guess that's classified information. <clears throat> Who's going to be there? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.